Welcome back to Button Down Gaming. My name is Jay and I am playing with myself. Alright, uh, so I went ahead and bought a shield because it was about the only thing I could afford. And now we're headed off... Uh, whoa, dude's name is The Genocide. This burly, armor-clad figure stands almost motionless as you approach. He regards you silently through his singular eye. The studs on his arms and the blades on his shoulders are stained and pitted with age. When he speaks, his voice is muffled and artificial. A hollow grumble that emanates from the entirety of the helmet. I am the Genocide. If you ask... I must answer. Pass on, then, and exchange no words. Um. Wait. Yeah, you said you had to answer if I asked. Why? From within the helmet, you hear a grinding noise. The sound of teeth gnashing, amplified. Then the voice again, bleak. We sat at the river's edge, and we wept for the time that was. We saw nothing more to conquer, and yet our fears still drove us. We had conquered the land, purged its impurities, made it ours. Still we wanted more. When we heard that humans had come to carve a home, we rejoiced to have a new foe, a new test of our truth. We rode against them. We <laughs> Oh, he's forced to answer, and so he has to tell this whole story. We drove them to the forge of the night sky, to the valley of Mrajolios, to the dangers of the Black Riage. But those who built atop these ruins, they thwarted us. Time and again. And so we brought our constructs and our deadliest warriors to the bay outside the city. We laid a mighty siege. We entered the human settlement. We fought past barricades and traps. Some of our constructs are still here, silent and dead. But when we thought we had achieved our greatest victory... Oh man, okay. Yeah, I'm not going to read all of that. I have no more questions. Farewell. Fine. I wish you no good tidings. <laughs> Got it. Uh, let's head up here. Ready. I don't know what's in this area. Let's find out. Glaive? Mercenary? Mercenary. What's up? Is your name Glaive or are you a Glaive? Okay. Um, I'm not going to talk to fucking everyone. Tell me where I need to go. Whoa. That's fucking dope as shit. This fountain is constructed of a material that seems halfway between wood and stone. It doesn't contain water, as might be expected. Instead, it's filled with swarming, tiny fish-like creatures that leap and cavort in a wriggling mass, chattering to each other in what sounds like a thousand different tongues. Catch one of them! Oh man, I can only do 75%. Let's do it! Yes! A jolly. You deftly snatch a single fish from the glistening, tumbling flood. The bubbling mass of remaining creatures squawk together in nonsensical outrage. Uh, listen to what they're saying. You fold your arms, listening intently to the fish jabber at each other. It sounds like a cloud of nonsense syllables mashed into baby speak. A few often repeated sounds tug at your attention. This is no string of gibberish after all. They are speaking a variety of language, but ones you've never heard before. Examine the woodstone fountain. Uh, it's all blah 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 blah. I'm gonna see if they do anything. And eventually, maybe I can learn a language. No? 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 Alright, leave the fountain alone. I am, however, gonna take a look at that jolly and what it does. You caught this creature from a fountain of sorts in government square. Small, fish-like, and constantly squirming, it never requires food or other nourishment, and it gibbers constantly in an indecipherable language. 
close. Alrighty then. Oh, council clerk. Okay. Council of what? Behind a lectern, a four-eyed, hairless mutant pr processes paper with a balletic grace. He's endlessly snapping the elegant fingers of his left hand, and each time the air twists and shimmers, either disgorging a document to be processed or accepting one that he's completed with his ink-stained right hand. Each of his eyes regards a distinct object, portals that are opening, preambles and recitals that must be reviewed, his own addenda that must be flawless. One eye twitches in your direction. Exaggerated scorn twists his mouth, and though his eye remains fixed on your face, he gives no verbal acknowledgement. The closest he comes is a faint sigh. At last, after shunting a half-dozen more documents to some distant cubby, he condescends to speak. You must wait, of course, until council matters conclude. His quarter gaze leaves you. His face returns to its former equanimity, and he continues his work, which shows no evidence of slacking, let alone concluding. I assure you that my matters are important enough to be worth a moment. Ah, oh, man, I'm spending this whole entire pool on everything. Yes! The clerk conveys his personal regard for the importance of your matters with a long, loud sigh. But he focuses one of his eyes on you and replies, Very well, very well. Let us weigh the worth of your needs, shall we? What is it you want? I like to talk about paperwork. A faint sigh is the only acknowledgement you receive. What are you doing with all these papers? The clerk shakes his head at your ignorance. I am taking them from where they were to where they must be by bending the space between them. And as they pass across my lectern, I assure that they are properly prepared. To the body politic, I serve as heart, kidney, and nervous system all in one. He snaps his fingers, opening a portal and flicking a scroll th through it. Before I undertook this role, the council employed layers and layers of legothates, scriveners, registrars, and couriers, each corruptible, vulnerable, insular. The memovira's tendrils grew through the cracks in that teetering edifice. He stares at you with two bright eyes. But now there is only myself. Had I not come to this office, I wonder who would rule the city. Who is the Memavira? The clerk scowls without looking up. Some builders raise monuments of marble. Others tear the monuments down, cook the marble to lime, mix the lime into concrete, and use the concrete to make hardened bunkers. He shakes his head. Organizations can be made the same way. And people. The Memavira has demolished many things, and from the rubble has built an impenetrable organization of hardened souls. You would be wise to keep your distance. An eye glances your way. But you don't look wise. Where can I find the Memavira? The clerk clutches quietly while filling out a form. Chuckles quietly while filling out a form. The bloom! A moment later, he adds, Sometimes, it seems, one can indeed judge a book by its cover. Nice. Uh, I'd like to ask you some general questions. Uh, I don't want any of these stories. Alright, bye. The clerk gives no acknowledgement that he heard and merely continues with his work. Let's go. Can I go in? This woman is dressed much like the levies who flank her, but unlike them, her expression is sober and alert. Her hair is cut short, the corners of her eyes wrinkled with crow's feet. A little swarm of mechanical drones circles around her, buzzing messages in her ears. She whispers replies in return, and every so often, one of them whisks away, disappearing into the city. What is it, citizen? She pauses, eyes darting to your tattoo, then to your face. No! You're the one they call a Don. I heard you were in the city. You sense a sudden wariness in her. It's been ten years since your last visit. I was too young to know you then, but the drones remember... Um, you're not that young. Blue Tide raised a tiny amount. I'm younger than I look. Not like you. The years don't touch you, do they? If you don't mind telling me, what's your business in the city? I'm trying to escape a creature that's hunting me. Smoking tendrils, grasping talons, a towering, nebulous shape. 
She sees the look on your face and nods. I've seen it, but only through the eyes of a drone. Not long ago, it killed a man in the streets, a man with the same mark you bear. If anyone else knew, there'd be panic. Even if it's only hunting, people like you. I haven't told anyone, not even the council. Another drone swoops past you, stopping just short of the woman's head. It unleashes a series of raspy buzzes and squawks. She whispers something to it, then glances back in your direction. What was it you wanted? I guess farewell. Farewell to you, whoever you really are. Alright, well next time on Button Down Gaming, maybe I will actually get somewhere. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I wish it would give me better direction. I can't see where I'm supposed to go at all. Um, this is just a point of reference, so maybe it's over here? Uh, we'll see. Maybe I can find a sleep location and get some rest. So next time on Button Down Gaming, come on back. Watch me play with myself.